Good afternoon, and thanks for watching my YouTube video on Identity Theft Evidence Part 3. My name is Shirai Hajai. Today is September 28, 2019, and the time is 1.10 p.m. on a Saturday afternoon. I want to go into a discussion of personal properties or effects. And the reason why I'm going to go into the litigations of this issue with my privacy rights and my possessions is because what you see that handle right behind me, I'm going to get up and show you they consider this a buggy or a shopping cart, which causes me to be publicly targeted by the people in the community and ostracized that I'm a homeless person when I am not a homeless person at all. As you see, I'm indoors. And for these false reporting and misrepresentation abuses, I am serial stalked and harassed based on someone's false accusation without evidence, based on a hearsay. And it's causing me to have economic problems and I am being affected by economic espionage by these individuals as well. So thanks for watching. I want to go into the discussions of the Fourth Amendment. Let me put on my glasses. My Fourth Amendment rights is an issue or a problem. Privacy rights, a serial encroachment problem, so that's what I wrote as a title. And I want to go into the definition of privacy rights under the Fourth Amendment before I go into the discussion. The rights to privacy is lured to, in the Fourth Amendment, to the United States, which states the rights of the person to be secured in their persons, houses, papers, and effect. And again, unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by the oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the person of things to be sieged. The logical extensions of the amendment to the digital properties would make sense if the internet had existed when it was written. The digital documents would have been considered more important than the literal papers mentioned in the text. In general, most warrantless searches of private premises are prohibited under the Fourth Amendment unless specified exception applies. Now, what are those special specified exception applies? I didn't go in detail, so I have to look that up. <laughs> For instance, a warrantless search may be lawful if an officer or the property owner has asked and is given consent to search. So that means it has to be written in my documentation that they have audio visuals in certain locations in my lease or the locations outside in the hallway, the common area, for what I understand of the Fourth Amendment is fair ground because that's a common area. But inside an apartment, a lease apartment, they're supposed to have it written in their lease where the locations of those cameras are. If the search is an incident to lawful arrest, if there is probable cause of search and there is an exigent 
circumstances, exigent circumstances, calling for the warrantless search. I will read that again. If there is probable cause to search and there is exigent circumstances calling for the warrantless search. So what does exigent circumstances mean? Exigent circumstances exist in a situation where a situation are in imminent danger, where evidence face imminent destructions or prior to the suspect imminent escape. Isn't that interesting? So these special circumstances, basically there's more than one, arises under imminent danger where evidence face imminent destructions or prior to suspects imminent escape. And you don't find what they did to me that I am in imminent danger of my life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Interesting. Warrantless searches with surveillance audiovisual device. Now this is the audiovisual device, legal terms of it without authorization or legal reasons and these encroachments has sometimes to do with identification conspiracy and cover-up and false impersonations in order to watch my every movement do from some person knowingly and willfully participated and civil liberties and human rights violations to impede or block me from explaining of these civil liberties and human rights or civil rights violations. And this is where I'm going to go into the, my possessions of my business briefcase, which it looks like an auditor briefcase, and it claim it is a buggy or a shopping cart and I am publicly ostracized and community banished because they claim I'm homeless based on these false reporting and misrepresentation abuses. So I'm going to stand and I'm going to move my, vid my video camera over to what they consider a buggy and a shopping cart. So you gotta look up the word and understand to comprehend the meaning what they consider and their perception. And I'm going to do that right now, okay? This is what they consider a buggy or a shopper cart. And they want to arrest me based on what they consider a buggy in a shopping cart because I have no rights. I found out homeless people have no rights. And they keep claiming I'm homeless in order to escape prosecutorial consequences on false accusations. And I have no rights. Even though you see me inside, and, that's, and this is going into the next subject matter of identity theft problems with this issue. And as you see, that's my personal possession. I can walk down the street and where I moved here, I noticed that they have in their streets surveillance cameras, kind of like Europe. And they, they noticed that I'm not homeless 
But when I go into stores with my business briefcase and then my folder bag, they always they always making these false accusations that justify them employees and the public or customers coming there and claim I'm homeless that justify them for harassing me with these false accusations and misrepresentation abuses. And then another issue is this false sex determination that I'm supposed to be a male by birth. And I'm not. You saw the evidence and identity theft evidence, YouTube video one and two, and you see my neck. They're always talking about my hairdo. I have an ugly hairdo. It's like they claim it was um, dreadlocks, and you see I'm not wearing dreadlocks. I'm just trying to cover up this. As you see it. You see that? It's all in my shoulder. I have her collarbone on this side. It's just real. It's out in my neck. It hurts. You can see the stretches. So I don't know what they're talking about. The next discussion is the Title 18 United States Code subsection 1030. Fraud and related activities and connections with computer. My personal computer is always constantly hacked with privacy issues in this apartment. I can't leave. If I leave out of this apartment, everybody run out to their cars. They follow me and they stalk me. And you see the evidence. You all, you all, you all see the evidence. And I'm going to go into the legal statutes of fraud and related activities and connections with computer fraud. A, whoever having knowingly access a computer without authorization or exceeded authorized access and by means of such conduct having obtained information that has been determined by the United States government pursuant to an executive order or statutes to require protection against unauthorized disclosures for reasons of national defense or foreign relations or any restricted data. Number two, intentionally accesses a computer without authorizations or exceed authorized access and therefore, thereby obtaining A, information obtained in a financial records of a financial institution or card issuer. B, information from any department or agencies of the United States. And C, information from any protected computer. That's a personal computer. Under the Fourth Amendment, it is protected. And four, knowing with intent to defraud accesses a protected computer without authorization or exceed authorized access and by means of such conduct further the intended fraud and obtain anything of value. And there's, there's a, a value range of the prosecution of that value that they hacked into the computer. Another topic I wanna to discuss is someone or some people are claiming he, she, or they are given me their excuse or explanation for which I am always angry. That supposedly justify or solidify them for facilitating their habitual dislikes towards me and serial harassment, unwarranted surveillance, computer hackings, privacy encroachments, false sex determination schemes, false reportings and misrepresentation abuses for no apparent reason. 
in which I am not angry or an angry person towards any one person. However, he or she or they does display in their behavior a form of psychological disorder towards my coexistence. and my color for no apparent reason. And again, I have explained in previous YouTube videos in which I have never been acquainted or related to those people, even my family member, I wouldn't have never give, show anger nor give them my identification. So I, I'll go into it. <laughs> Just hold on. <laughs> are related to those people who has these habitual dislike towards my coexistence and appearances. Remember my hairdo? There's always a problem with my hairdo. And you see on this YouTube, I go to the store. It's always about them being agitated and hate my hairdo. But if you put a person with the same color... And they don't talk about their color and their hair. They don't talk about their Rasta hairdos. They don't talk about their hairdos down their backs and butts. And you see it's not that long. It isn't. And they are infuriated with habitual dislike because of my appearance. Because I guess they're trying to make me look like I'm something I'm not. And these habitual dislike towards me and my coexistence and appearances for possessing a United States citizenship based on my skin color, also known as colorism and shadism, is a form of prejudice or discrimination, usually from members of the same race, in which people are treated differently based on the social implications from cultural meanings attached to the skin color. So for that reason, I don't look like them so they can false impersonate me or this, this caliphate or rank system that these people are coming here to this country. I'm being discriminated against based on my color. And for that reason, I am compelled or forced into relational identity and identification surrogates or substituted through disidentification of my authentic original identity or identification of goods that triggered identity segregation, social conformability, tipping, conversion methods or schemes by those defendants. The tipping method. The tipping method is defined as a sociological phenomenon from prior problems. And identity tipping principles suggest that one major race, religion, advocacy groups, LGBT, special interests, or caucuses groups will abandon and avoid a particular neighborhood or labor market on someone else's credentials. They were, well, they will abandon their own credentials. I'm sorry, I misspoke there. They will abandon their own credentials after the minority population that are federally protected class demographically increase in those particular areas or labor market that exceed a certain percentage point. In order to prevent tipping in those neighborhoods, educational attainments, housing, and labor market, any person are permitted to unlawfully supersede federal and state laws by false impersonation. And using another person's original 
identification by forged or fraudulent identification of goods, identity instruments or identifiers to escape any economic disparity in educational inequalities to increase hiring, housing, educational attainment and financial fraud practices quotas in those federally protected class categories by pretending a person who is falsely personating the original person, me, is classified as the original. Classified as the original person under the civil rights statutes, either in the same race or cross race or cross gender categories in order to stay predominantly and or economically controlled by one advocacy group, LGBT, special interest or caucuses communities. Tipping occurs when one or more person, including a thousand or a, thousand, a million of people are on one original person or my original identification of goods, identity instruments, or identifiers used as an open source or a template with the intent to cause false impersonation. After using the victim's or my state driver's license or identification of goods used as a public domain or an open source identification template, from the manipulations of state databases causing serious national security issues or problems. So they will abandon a certain neighborhood or a labor market to move into somebody else's paperwork in order to go into that new community with their credentials. And this is how I'm being affected by these type of false impersonations on forge and fraudulent identity instruments or identification of goods. Based on my skin color, for no apparent reason. The last discussion, and because a person habitual dislikes, tours my color, female birth sex and female gender identity, he, she, or they wants to arrest me in accordance to them in which I, had, I am supposedly, I am supposedly given these identity thieves my identification of goods out. I suppose giving it, giving it out or giving a copy is not true. Not once, ever, ever, never had gave any, what I'm having this problem and you think I'm crazy, I'm gonna give you my credentials. I'm supposed to give them copies of my identification of goods. When I know that the, those places have surveillance cameras, they should see me there with this hairdo they don't like. Showing me giving out that idea. Therefore, he, she, or they are pathological liars or psychological liars. And if I have given those identity thieves copies of my identification of goods, when I have never knew nor have I ever been acquainted or related to those people, even I, I wouldn't even give my own family members because I've been abused by them because of this issue. Remember, and Identity I thought video one and two, I discussed my mother's cosmetic case. I never gave anything. It was always stolen from me. And if they accusing me of these such activities of me giving out my copies of my ID or going in there and getting a, 
getting the original copy and giving it to them. And they should have the surveillance camera on me doing so. Or they should have some type of surveillance camera showing me doing, giving them that ID. I don't even know these people on it. Like I said, the law enforcement calls it a ghost crime because I don't know who these people are that are on it, on my credentials. And I would have never relinquished my identity knowing that I will be compromised and put in a precarious position because of them on my information. And someone is attempting to conceal he, she, or they who are unlawfully distributing forged or fraudulent identity instruments cover up. Because they threatened to lock me up. That's why I did this third part because yesterday they wanted they were discussing someone, I can hear them because of the audio video in my apartment and then outside, they want to lock me up because they claim I gave them copies for so they wouldn't be arrested on their jobs or lock up an infringement of my constitutional rights violations. I never gave anyone my credentials. I don't even know these people to give my credentials to. Oh, and the intercepted of my phone calls. Oh, this is good. They did something unbelievably interesting. They're intercepting my phone calls. So I'm dialing out and they're picking up. And I will request certain things from the service provider or customer service representative. And it would tell me, well, you should be receiving the information. Well, I check and I never receive it. I call back and they have no records of this. They're intercepting my calls like they're the company or agency. And I told you about the United States fraud. This is pretty damn scary. I'm being isolated because they're on my credentials and they prevented me to filing complaints or they're impeding or hindering me for filing complaints because they monitored me in my apartment due to these activities of human rights violations for the protections of these people who are preferably treated and profiled more favorably, these identity thieves on my credentials for lawsuits. They're trying to prevent lawsuits and they want to throw me in the streets because they're on it. Now, this is another discussion that was told to me everywhere. I'm, I, I'm angry because they're on it. And that's interesting. This is United States. Each and citizens have their individual credentials and they shouldn't be on it. Someone is trying to change the rules which is called Fabian Society, a gradual change without firing a shot. I have no rights. I'm, I feel like I'm in identity slavery behind this method. I have no rights constitutionally. If they have bad credit, they will steal my credit report because they have bad credit and forge my signature and I never authorized it. And that's another issue by itself with these credit companies. I have it blocked and I never authorized it. So I wouldn't use a credit card any longer because of what happened under my original name. And they're angry because they can't forge a credit card on me. That was yesterday afternoon. I heard it continuously since I moved here. They've been trying to forge credit cards on me. And because of their financial positions, which they think I have money, I don't know. I, I think this is unbelievably, unbelievable that he, she, or they are suffering some type of psychological problem. And I'm supposed to be the means to their ends. And they're supposed to be using my paperwork as an open source, like my credit report, and then forging my signature on something I never authorized. That's, that's what's really going on now. I never authorized it. 
So who authorized it? So the incident with my U.S. mail, with one of my credit reports, they opened it, they hold my mail, and they told me what was in it, and they were using it, I guess, to get jobs, and I never authorized it. It should, legally, it should be on, that, on, on my credit report. They're manipulating, they're using it as a template. I, I found this out, and I have evidence of this as well. And then claim about false, I'm having false paperwork and their credit history or their personal problem is my problem and I'm not connected to them. And I'm being affected mentally. I've been physically assaulted because of these issues with their false reporting and misrepresentation abuses and false sex determination schemes of my female birth sex and gender identity being female. You will have to understand my circumstances. I don't live comfortably. I don't sleep well. I've been threatened. They're gonna hit me upside the head with a bat or brick. They will try to come into my apartment, which I find some things that my door was unlocked or something's been moved that they've been in my apartment along with the audio video. And the reason why I can prove this point is when I say something in my apartment, I know they're listening and they can tell me when I'm out in public, and in the grocery stores, they tell me what I discuss in the privacy of my own home. They were threatened to change my social security number and I never authorized it. I do not want my social security number changed. I couldn't even get legal representation. So I had to become an attorney myself in order to try to combat these these problems that I have no connections to these people personal circumstances they claim they have credit problems there's lawyers for it they claim they can't go back to school there's online schools even even single mothers can go to school on why they watching their baby their baby sleep they can get online and and, and study there's no more excuse for them to use my information as a quota. I'm tired. It has been a long journey with this issue. And people want to use my information as an open source and a template. And I have proof of this. Have a blessed afternoon.